is the library of content. So our designers are working hard away creating all this library of content, and our, deve our developers are building um, a massive amount of new technology, which is not just being used in functional skills, which we're going to show how it's going to be applied to all formal aspects of learning. So just to give a little teaser for some of the styles of the content. The metric system was first introduced in France in 1799 and is now the accepted internationally agreed standard of measurement across the world. Uh, um, uh, so obviously the, the actual the content itself is a range of content for this, but I think the bits that we're going to talk about today is um, there's a range of new functionality, that eight major stories of functionality, which is what has been used in functional skills, can be applied pretty much for any um, learning intervention, be that sales training, leadership, management training. So Dave's going to talk us through. The magnificent Dave, chief learning architect, uh, is going to talk us through. So hopefully... What we're going to talk through now is going to be the user journey through the new functional skills. Um, so also looking at some of the ways in which it could be used in various different types of learning and development intervention. So the first thing that we've developed um, is the ability to show multiple learning plans on the login page. Currently, an individual can have uh, multiple login pages, uh, multiple learning plans, sorry. However, they have to then go and choose which one they would like to go into. The reason we're doing this is so that apprentices can come in, they can have the technical certificate, so the actual knowledge part of their apprenticeship, they can then have their literacy, numeracy and ICT curricula all sitting there on their home page and visually they can see exactly how far through they are. They can then dig, dig deeper into those to be able to find the modules within them. So an application of this um, is going to be within the FUSE school, um, so our charity arm, where a student's going to be able to go in and is going to be able to see how far through their chemistry journey they are, how far through their biology journey, how far through their physics journey they are. Also, it may be in a learning and development intervention that someone could have a technical specialist role that they're working through. Um, it could be that they're on a leadership and management course that they're working through. And they can see both of those and how far they've completed at exactly the same time. So once the students actually decided what they're going to be doing next is that we want to test what they've learned already, what they know currently. And so we're building a new type of testing called diagnostic testing. There's a couple of things which this is going to enable us to do. It's going to enable us to have new question types. Um, we're going to be able to add images to questions now, and we're also going to be able to add mathematical formulae and fractions to questions as well. But what the diagnostic testing allows us to do is to actually say to somebody, what of this curriculum do you already know? Let us take a base level, and let's take an understanding of where you are currently. Why that's important is it then allows us to step on to the next phase, which is that we can then actually personalise the curriculum to that individual. Based on the answers they give us in the diagnostic, we understand what they already understand of that topic and what they haven't understood. And therefore, we can filter those topics so that the individual only has to work through the content which they don't understand to that point. So this could be used in a compliance centre where we're needing people to be compliant every six months. And instead of them having to go through the full course again, they could take a diagnostic, they could show us that they already understand and are fully compliant within 75% of the areas, and therefore they only have to do 25% of the cur uh, curriculum, saving both themselves and the company a vast amount of time. Currently, we can allow people to do reflective questions and use text-based answers. For certain things that we're going to be working on, that may not be the best media for someone to be able to express themselves. They may sit down and they may take longer to actually think about formulating a text-based answer than they would be able to give us an audio explanation, or even better, a video explanation of them actually putting something into practice. So coming within the functional skills, someone's going to be able to answer a question not only with text, but also with an audio file or with a video file. And we'll be talking through where that could be used in uh, sales and leadership and development, leadership and management training in a little bit. <laughs> the final thing that we're leveraging is a chat facility. Um, so for the first time ever, we're going to be able to have chat within Fuse. Within the functional skills, this will allow a assessor and a student to be able to talk, for the student to be able to ask questions, to get formative feedback, um, and to get pastoral care on what it is that they're learning. However, now that we've built this functionality within Fuse, we could leverage it in other areas. We could use it within um, mentoring and coaching programs to allow people to have a discussion not only with a single more knowledgeable other, but also a whole network of individuals as well. So, Steve? So, a practical example, um, a client we're just about to kick off with, we've been piloting for a while, but it's just about to go um, global for, for the sales team, is to look upon how we're using this functionality to actually change their, their learning across their sales teams. 
So um, using what we know in Fuse already, what we're going to currently do, and we've already been doing some of this in LinkedIn, is to find the best people they know to present their, their core products. So their advertising products, their HR products, their sales navigator, their, their sales tool products. So find the best people, capture the best practices, make those into, into bite-sized videos. Those bite-sized videos then, then sit inside learning plans with inside Fuse. Instead of that knowledge being delivered in a classroom, that knowledge is now being delivered um, prior to the learning that goes on, um, in, uh, prior to the classroom. Pre-learning plans, um, so once we, we understand all the digitalization knowledge, therefore allows, allows the workshops uh, to be much more experience-based, scenario-based, um, activity-based. So instead of people practicing first time back at the workplace on their customers, they're practicing actually for the first time a number of times inside the classroom because they've learned the practical knowledge from the best people before they've actually got to the classroom. But the really exciting bit, and I think this is where we're adding the new functionality that we're building uh, with Pira, is um, uh, um, the video-based accreditation. <laughs> so post, post the classroom activity, to be competent and to prove you can now sell that product, um, you do um, a, video, um, a video examination on presenting each of those three core products. That then goes out to uh, the range of experts, up to 20, 30 people on LinkedIn, that are the people that say, yes, I, you know, I can say whether you're a 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10, 10 out of 10, and they get the badge of the future to say, yep, you're certified on that product.